episode of the Map Movie Route in theaters and on Peacock, and I watched it. And shocking everybody who doesn't know me, I absolutely loved it. However, if you do know me, you'd know that I was hyped for this movie since the announcement about seven years ago. But enough about me, let's get into my genuine review of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Obviously, there will be major spoilers in this video, so be aware or watch the movie first like a normal person. Before I get into literally everything I love about the movie, which is everything about the movie, I will start with my one complaint, and I promise I will try to be quick. Vanessa. And I know hating on the only female character in a movie is horrible and misogynistic. However, she was so secretive about everything. She knew everything that Mike was trying to investigate, and claimed she was warning him in her own weird way. Well, she wasn't, like, at all. She was being cryptic, and dare I say, like her father. She did the same double take at Mike's last name as her father did. I'll share my theories about Vanessa at the end, though. Okay, now for the references and parts that I adore. Like I said, which is basically all of the movie. Uh, many people complained about Michael's family and how different from the games it is, but I actually love it. I think it's a refreshing take on the confusing and constantly theorized Abby family. Or now the Schmidt family, seeing as Vanessa is an aftermath. Which honestly, I do not mind. I don't think it ruins the matter. It makes a better connection between her and William, to be honest, but I'm glad it is not in the games. That would make everything worse. Um, Garrett's kidnapping is incredibly similar to Charlotte Emily's fate, and I think this is on purpose. Trusting a strange man at a young age, not being taken care of or bonded to properly. In this metaphor, Mike was a security puppet, failing at his job and living with the guilt, and Garrett is Charlie. <laughs> and I am ashamed to admit that I only realized this connection when I was writing the script. And now to Abby. Many people do not like Abby. Not in the way they didn't like Naval Times, claiming she was too childish and selfish even though she was 13 years old, but in the fact that she'll never be Elizabeth. But I disagree. Springlock suit in the storage room, while a lot of people, including myself, thought it was the marionette at first, or how people online thought it was Elle from the short stories, but I think it's Circus Baby. If it's Baby, where's the ice cream machine? Do you see how small that damn robot is? And a common theme I will be bringing back is creative differences. She can look however she wants. She could try to put Abby in the circus baby suit, which is another parallel between movie and game. While the L theory has its parts, and that part being the appearance, I don't think it is L, because as someone who has read the short stories, L is a animatronic that replaces you piece by piece not in a spring lock way. The break-in victims. Victim in quotes because they were literally asking for it, breaking into an abandoned property in broad daylight. Um, their deaths are probably my favorite in the entire movie. The, <laughs> the other being William. Um, it's very nice to see the animatronics violence in action, especially Carl, because we get to see it go crazy, and we really only saw that in FNAF 4. It wasn't a rare chance to get jump scared by Carl, but it was unlikely, so seeing it absolutely demolish that guy's face was incredible to see. We didn't get to see exactly what Bonnie did in the closet, by it, but I assume some sort of body contortion. I was a bit sad to see Bonnie emerge from the closet with no blood in his fur, but we win some, we lose some, as Rockstar Foxy would say. And Foxy. We got to see lots of Foxy. To every young furry's delight. He didn't do much in the main game, sadly. Just popping in to say hi. He didn't even get an animated jump scare. But we got to see him sprint and slash and sing and dance with the band. Something funny that my older sister asked me and my siblings about is why William made Foxy look like that. I.e. the lack of furry legs, the raw hands, and an entire hook. As well as slashes and holes in his chest. And there really is no reason. He's just kind of like that. My other sister said it's because he was decommissioned and was the original Flight of 87 culprit until Mangle came along. The legit- <sighs> I don't know the truth of that statement, but my older sister continued to fail to understand. Now to talk about easter eggs and how much I love them. Matt Pat. Now that we're all gonna die, I have something to admit. I don't 
don't care for MatPat, do not care for him, don't and will never understand the hype. I've hated that guy since day one, never liked him, since third grade I've always hated him and his theories. But it was nice to see him, I'm just shocked Scott let him be in the movie, seeing he has a one-sided silent beef with him that isn't so silent anymore after Bunny Call. Um, I guess it's because he shaped the youth of FNAF fans, that is in quotes. But I don't know, he didn't raise me, I never watched Game Theory, and I've been on this earth for 16 years. Eight of those were spent loving FNAF, and when that pet showed up, my brother didn't recognize his voice at first, so when it showed his face, my brother literally yelled in a theater, holy shit, Matt Pat, and literally everybody and their mom shushed him. Sparky! Uh, we see the cafe that Matt Pat works at is called Sparky's, uh, but we also see decommissioned Sparky in the storage room quite a bit. I never believed the Sparky theory as a kid, honestly, or maybe I did, and I don't remember. But I do remember watching those stupid videos like Top 10 FNAF Secrets, Warning, Scary, as a kid. So I was excited to see him. Like seeing an old friend you haven't talked to in a while in a Walmart. <laughs> Midnight Motorist. This one was very easy to see. Um, the guy who was demolished by Cupcake was wearing the Midnight Motorist shirt. And that's my favorite lore-related minigame from Pizza Simulator. So it's nice to see it get mentioned. Chico's Magic Rainbow. Literally nothing to say about it lore-wise, seeing as it's FNAF World and not base series, but it was very fun to point out to my friend, who knows nothing about FNAF, to whom I saw the movie with. FNAF World's my favorite FNAF game, so it's nice to see references get to it every once in a while. The Marionette. I didn't notice that motherfucker was there because the movie was so dark. But, um, here are some pictures of the puppet that we saw in the movie, or people saw in the movie. This one, I was quite disappointed not to see, but I still thought I'd mention it. In the beginning credits, when William is leading the kids into the closet to kill them, he doesn't take the little girl, Chica, first. Uh, fans like myself know that Chica was supposedly, emphasis on supposedly, the first of the five children to be killed by William, as he stated that her dead dog was still alive and that he could lead her to him. But I'm not gonna hold a grudge. Like I said, it's a new universe and creative differences can be taken. Balloon Boy. Balloon Boy. I've never met someone who doesn't dislike Balloon Boy at, to some degree. So when that little fucker was the only jump scare in this damn movie, imagine my rage. Not at the lack of jump scares. I couldn't care less if this movie was jump scare free. It's the fact that Balloon Boy got the only chance to do so. Also, his little figure confirms that FNAF 2 is a prequel in this universe, but we already assumed that, really. Cory X Kenshin, we all knew he was going to be in the movie because it was revealed incredibly early. But it was funny to see him as the cab driver. I never watched Cory personally, but I love Jay, so I kind of have to enjoy Cory by extension. Um, this one is not an easter egg, but the fort building scene. If you watch my brother Tusk's video, you'll know what I'm gonna say. It makes sense that the animatronic helped Abby build the fort. They never got a chance like that, and they never will again because of William. That scene reminds the viewer that William murdered children. They were robbed of a life and a future. They are permanently eight years old. Of course they'll get along and want to do everything with Abby. Hence, the circus baby suit scene. They wanted her to be like them forever. Rob her of her childhood like William did. But they weren't seeing it as robbing. They saw it as prolonging. And finally, my hopes and theories for a sequel. Um, if you don't want to see this, I'd leave the video now. Because, um, I have opinions. Shocking everybody. I think Vanessa is going to turn out like her father. She's incredibly similar to him, because they are family, but she did the same double take as Michael's name. She's cryptic and secretive. If we're going to get more in-game connections, William is likely going to corrupt her mind somehow. I don't think they're going to go the help wanted corruption route if this happens. I assume they'll continue the dream theory, which I thought was amazing. As for a plot, I'm not really sure, but I'd be okay if we didn't get a sequel. It'd probably be for the better of the story, but a sequel would un help us understand this universe's lore better. I think it would be a FNAF 3-esque movie. Early 2010s, the security guard um, gets a job at a horror joint based on the murders at Freddy's in the 80s and the uncovering it 
the uncovering of it in the early 2000s. Springtrap is found in the kitchen of Freddy's, and they use him as the main attraction. Chaos and fire ensues. Maybe Vanessa shows up and begs them to shut the joint down, but not telling them why in a typical Vanessa fashion. I think Jeremy would be a likely candidate for this protagonist, as he's historically the Lighted 87 victim, but that doesn't matter in this universe. <laughs> Connecting a theory to a theory, many think he's the protagonist of FNAF 3 because the Phantoms are the FNAF 2 animatronics and he was the FNAF 2 security guard. Like I said, all of this is just me speculating, none of this is set in stone, and it likely never will be. And I do want a sequel, but I also don't because it wouldn't... It wouldn't be good, honestly. I think it would do bad for the series. Or just the movie in general. But that's really it. Bye.